will now uh, call the public hearing dated April 23, 2019 to order. This public hearing is being conveyed, uh, convened pursuant to the terms of the Local Government Act prior to the consideration of Village of Elmont Zoning Amendment Bylaw number 769-2019. At a public hearing, any person present who believes that they are affected by a matter being considered shall be given an opportunity to be heard on the matter contained in the proposal. Members of the public speaking on the proposal should at the appropriate time commence with your address to this council by <coughs> clearly stating your name and area of residence upon which you may give us the benefit of your views concerning the proposal. Anyone who deems their interests are affected shall be given the opportunity to be heard at this meeting. No one will be or should feel discouraged or prevented from making their views known. All who speak at this public hearing will restrict the remarks to matters contained in the proposal and it is my responsibility as chairperson of this meeting to ensure that all remarks are so restricted. At the conclusion of a public hearing, Council may, without further notice, give whatever effect Council believes proper to the representation made at the hearing. We have a presentation uh, by staff. Ms. Vicente. Thank you. Okay. So the public hearing this evening is in regards to a zoning amendment application by the owner of 975 Bevan Crescent, legally described as Lot 11, District Lot 7355, Caribou District Plan 23725, PID 008461937. 975 Bevan Crescent is currently zoned R2 for mixed housing residential. Uh, the applicant would like to operate a bed and breakfast in the basement of their home. The R2 zone does not currently permit bed and breakfasts. Um, the zones that do permit bed and breakfasts are residential R1, rural residential RR1, and rural residential 2 RR2. The R1 zone, where bed and breakfasts are already permitted, is very similar to the R2 zone. Therefore, staff are recommending that bed and breakfasts be permitted in the R2 zone. The R2 and R1 zones have the same minimum lot size of 700 meters squared, but the actual size of properties in the R1 and R2 zones vary. Since density and parking requirements are some of the bigger concerns when adding a new use to a zone, uh, this bylaw amendment recommends a minimum lot size of 700 meters squared for a bed and breakfast use to discourage this use on smaller lots. For any properties that are under 700 meters squared and currently operating a bed and breakfast, they will become legally non-compliant and this particular rule wouldn't apply to them for as long as the use continues. Finally, the zoning amendment uh, bylaw proposes a minor update to the short-term vacation rental definition, minor wording changes in the bed and breakfast regulations, and corrects short-term vacation rental use to a principal use instead of an accessory use. This bylaw amendment is compliant with the official community plan and referrals were sent out internally and externally and no issues have been raised. Staff recommends giving third reading to zoning amendment bylaw number 796 if no major issue issues arise from this public hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any written submissions? There are none. Thank you. Are there any presentations by the proponent? Council, do you have any questions of the proponent at this time? Are there any public submissions or presentations to form part of the minutes of this public hearing? Calling a second time for public submissions and presentations to form the part of the minutes of this hearing. And calling a third. I now adjourn this public hearing. And to call the uh, call to order the regular meeting of council, April 23, 2019. Uh, adoption of the agenda item 2.1, uh, that the agenda for today's date uh, be adopted as amended, please council, uh, as there are some additional information presented for item 10.3. Council Bunchett, Councilor Pearson, are there any further additions? All in favor? Carried. Uh, 
3.1, public comment on items considered by council as part of the approved agenda. Just some commentary before we get going on that one. Um, they're only to be in regarding an item on the current agenda and to be put forth, they must be on topics not normally dealt with by village staff as a matter of routine. They should be addressed through the chair and answers given likewise. Debates with or by individual members of council or staff are not allowed during the public comment period. No commitments shall be made by council in replying to a question. Therefore, matters which may require action of council will be tabled to a future meeting of this council. Most importantly, as we just had a public hearing, uh, comments were should have been made then about public hearing and that at this juncture, they should not refer to that public hearing. Uh, at this time, individuals must state their name and area of residence for identification purposes. And I forgot my timer, so I'll just wing it. Uh, you are limited to two minutes uh, beginning after welcome. <coughs> are there any public comments under item 3.1? Yes. Eugene Jason, to Belmont. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, Michael is his proposal for the three renders brewery. I feel that what must also be taken into account is the employment is to residents of Delhi. That he's already given to us. And I would urge that the uh, variance be accepted. Uh, that he be able to uh, waive the that the village be able to waive the parking requirements that he right now is restricted with. Uh, also with the Belmont Youth Soccer, that they be allowed to um, uh, have their practices without cost. And the third, the acceptance of the uh, BCAA contest. It's just the village being able to say, yes, it is possible on our property. And it would be a great benefit. I see in the summertime, not only use of citizens, but also those from outside our village who use that property and it would be a great benefit to us. Thank you very much. Further comments? Yes. Welcome. I was just thinking it's a lot of, in a really busy, busy area with lots of businesses and no parking. People are still flocking. They walk from wherever they find parking spots. They walk down the hill and they go to where they need to go. And it's packed. Like there's one business close to the other and it's a vibrant uh, hub. Um, and, and I think that, you know, when, when you have something like the community hall or the legion where you have big functions and you need room for 80 cars, yes, but we don't want to do that downtown. You want it packed, you want it vibrant, you want it to feel like a parking That's all I have to say. Thank you. Further public comments? Yes. So I'm Rosh I live in Belmont, and my Welcome. Um, thanks. Um, my comment is uh, with regards to Mr. Brent Scott from Scooter's Pizza, his uh, request about uh, business signage. And um, as a downtown business owner, I, I know we've had meetings with some downtown businesses who wanted to see more signage directing traffic in. Um, and I think rather than see a variance on an individual sign, uh, because I re remember the process that the village staff had gone through while creating the signage <coughs> bylaw. I think it's better to see one big sign closer to the entrance, uh, directing traffic to all downtown businesses and maybe businesses that want their name on there can take to have, it, that, uh, have their names on there. I think that would be a better solution than because of this big gap we have between uh, you know, uh, all the high school property. I think it's worthwhile considering that, uh, that it is an issue, uh, getting people into downtown uh, and avoiding congestion at, at the frontage road. So. Thank you very much. Further comments? Yes. Michael Lewis, Village of Avenue. Yeah, Welcome. Prior to the, uh, the uh, youth soccer, I completely support um, foregoing the rent on that. My kids have been super keen for soccer, and I would hate to see something like that create any kind of hindrance to that organization and pushing it forward. 
It is the international sport. Further comments? Thank you very much. Uh, please, Council, motion to receive public comments. Council Pearson, Council McLean. All in favor? Carried. Adoption of the minutes of the previous regular council meeting of April 9, 2019, uh, that they be adopted as presented. Councilor Pearson, Councilor Blanchette, anybody catch any errors or omissions? Remember that it was Mr. Robinson's fault if there is, so. <laughs> Harry, none, all in favor? Carried. Item 5.1, uh, delegations. We have a couple this evening, uh, beginning with BC Timber Sales, Prince George area, and their introduction to us. Uh, we have uh, Jeremy Greenfield and Len Stratton, uh, both RPFs, and uh, you take a, a stand up to that little podium over there. The floor is yours, gentlemen. Well, thank you, Mayor and Councillors. I really appreciate the opportunity to um, come here tonight and um, present to to you folks and really um, tonight is about trying to um, raise the level of awareness about the BC Timber sales provincially but also at the local level and uh, um, within the communities that um, that we work within. Um, a as you mentioned, um, Mr. Mayor, my name is Len Stratton. I'm the Timber Sales Manager with BC Timber Sales, Prince George Business Area. My colleague, Jeremy Greenfield, is the Woodlands Manager. Um, the Prince George business area includes operations in um, the Robson Valley, here where we are tonight, um, along with um, Prince George and um, the Mackenzie Natural Resource Districts as well. So, so quite a large area. <laughs> um, and, and so, yeah, so really tonight is about coming here and, and introducing ourselves. Um, um, at the provincial level, uh, BC Timber Sales holds um, a large amount of the provincial allowable annual cut for the purpose of auctioning timber to generate data points for the market pricing system, which in turn supports um, the softwood lumber agreement that we have with, um, with our, our friends to the south, the, the, the Americans. Um, so it's really important that um, we put a focus on the work that we do within our communities um, and, and, and as well as the work that we do um, with our stakeholders and um, along with our First Nations um, partners as well. So um, I thought what we would do maybe is start off, we have a B BCTS, BC Timber Sales um, video. It's at the provincial level, but I think it does a good job. I think it's about seven minutes long, providing kind of that provincial overview to the program. And then after that, um, uh, maybe I'll go into a few of the business area facts and maybe a little bit more about um, the work that we're doing in the Robson Valley and more specifically Valmont and, and, and in the Kinbasket South. So would we be able to... Thank you. BC Timber Sales, BCTS, manages the harvesting and reforestation of a significant portion of the timber in British Columbia's provincial forest. We operate in 12 business areas throughout the province and employ more than 600 staff in 33 communities. BCTS is a self-financing program within British Columbia's Ministry of Forests, Lands, Natural Resource Operations and Rural Development. Most of the land in British Columbia is public and more than half of public land is provincial forests. The provincial chief forester determines how much of the timber on public lands can be sustainably harvested. This is referred to as the Allowable Annual Cut, or the AAC. BCTS manages 20% of the Allowable Annual Cut for the province. Anyone, including BCTS, who wants to harvest timber from public land must develop plans that comply with forest laws and sustainable forest management principles. We consult with the public, First Nations, industry, and experts to ensure plans include steps to maintain ecosystem health and support resilient communities and good-paying jobs. Before anyone can harvest public timber, a forest stewardship plan must be created and approved. 
Forest Stewardship Plans, or FSPs, are legal documents that identify where road building, forest harvesting, and silviculture activities such as planting and brushing may occur. FSPs are valid for five years. They describe how a licensee will meet with objectives set by government for managing soil, timber, wildlife, water, fish, biodiversity, visual quality, cultural heritage, recreation, invasive plants, and natural range barriers. BCTS encourages community members to participate in planning our forest activities and to provide input on our forest stewardship plans. Whenever a forest stewardship plan is prepared or amended, it is made available for public review and comment. This gives the public stakeholders, and First Nations the opportunity to inform BCTS about their interests before any site-specific plans are made, including roads and harvesting locations. Once a forest stewardship plan is approved, foresters and other professionals develop site-specific plans and assessments for archaeology, hydrology, visual impacts, and terrain stability. Sustainable forest management is an overarching principle for BCTS. All of our operations are certified to internationally recognized sustainable forest management standards. This provides assurances to the public and to our customers that our timber comes from legal and well-managed forests. Sustainable forest management is more than just managing timber. We also help manage habitat for species at risk and support the provincial forest carbon strategy. After the site-specific planning has been completed, we generally employ local contractors to lay out cut block boundaries on the ground and build roads to access the timber. At BCTS, we respond to ever-evolving situations by incorporating scientific advances to better meet changing public expectations and new market circumstances. We apply adaptive forest management to both long-term planning and day-to-day decision-making. Once laid out, cut blocks are bundled to form timber sale licenses, or TSLs, which BCTS competitively auctions. Timber sale licenses are awarded to the BCTS registrant with the highest bid. The licensee may be a market logger, sawmill operator, independent timber processor, or a major licensee. Once a timber sale license is awarded, the licensee manages the harvesting operations. Data obtained from BCTS's timber auctions is used to determine the market value of timber harvested from public land. This business process is referred to as the market pricing system. The market pricing system is used to demonstrate to our trade partners that public timber is being sold at market prices. The market pricing system also ensures British Columbians receive fair market value for their timber resources. As well, by providing a reliable supply of timber through open and competitive auctions to loggers, wood processors, and other forestry businesses, BCTS supports workers in rural communities across BC. Our operations directly support over 8,000 jobs and another 10,000 indirect jobs in British Columbia. Since its creation in 2003, BCTS provides, on average, over $50 million a year in net revenue to the province. Net revenue from BCTS operations support other government programs and infrastructure such as highways, hospitals, schools, and provincial parks. The vast majority of our activities, such as development, road construction, tree planting, and road deactivation, are contracted to the private sector. Each year we competitively award over $140 million in contracts to forest sector companies and local contractors throughout the province. Between 2003 and 2018, we put over $1.1 billion into rural communities and economies. At BCTS, worker safety is an overarching principle. BCTS operations have had third-party safe company certification since 2007. All our contractors working in the field are required to be safe certified. 
Strong relationships are essential to our success. Key areas of focus for BCTS are effective communication, transparency, information sharing, and maintaining strong business-to-business -business relationships. We continually seek input, collaboration, and partnership opportunities with First Nations, major licensees, communities, contractors, and other divisions of government for mutual benefit. In 2018, BCTS adopted a new overarching principle, reconciliation with Indigenous peoples. We are helping to increase First Nations capacity and participation in the forest sector, and have entered into nearly 100 agreements with First Nations. All areas harvested by BCTS licensees are reforested with a diverse array of seedlings native to the area. Each year, BCTS spends over $40 million on silviculture activities and grows and plants more than 40 million of our own seedlings. We also supply seedlings to government reforestation and restoration programs, such as the Forests for Tomorrow program, the Forest Carbon Initiative, and the Forest Enhancement Society. In 2017-2018, BCTS managed the production, storage, and distribution of more than 20 million seedlings for other government programs. All seedlings planted on public land are tended to for up to 20 years, or until they are declared healthy and free of competition from surrounding plants, shrubs, or trees. This ensures healthy, sustainable forests for the future. BCTS is dedicated to the safety of everyone affected by our operations and are invested in our relationship with First Nations, local communities, industry, contractors, and other government departments. We play an important role in the forest sector, contribute to the health and resiliency of rural communities, and sustainably manage the forests for the benefit and prosperity of all British Columbians. Good. So, um, I, I do have some, some pamphlets here, um, if I may. Um, I have a copy for you. One is at um, the provincial level of our program, and as well as some local level statistics. And I can leave extra copies behind as well. If That'd be great. That works. We encourage you to share the information, pass it out. Thank you. Keep it transparent and open. <coughs> Absolutely. <coughs> Thanks. Okay, so, so again, thank you for, for, for that. Um, that information is available on, on the public website. On, um, if you Google BC Timber Sales, the, um, that video will come up. So um, if it pleases anyone, you're welcome to, uh, to um, review it again or share it with anybody else that you think might be interested in sharing uh, that with. We'd encourage you to do that. Um, so just a little bit about at the local level, and maybe first a time check him. Am I okay with, I'm good, okay, good. So at the local level, as I mentioned earlier on, the Prince George business area is quite large. Um, it includes operations in Mackenzie, um, Prince George, and here in the Robson Valley. Uh, a little bit about Mackenzie and Prince George. Um, we auction approximately 900,000 to a million cubic meters in, in, in Mackenzie. Um, and the majority of our, of our efforts are focused right now on stewardship um, values associated with the uh, spruce bark beetle. Unfortunately, we uh, thought we um, had addressed the majority of stewardship issues with the mountain pine beetle, but now we're faced with spruce bark beetle, but we have a, a pretty um, aggressive strategy that we're quite confident in that um, not only manages forest health considerations, but provides a balance between that and managing for other resource values. In um, Prince George, um, we auction approximately 900,000 cubic meters at this point. Again, the priority is on um, stewardship with uh, spruce bark beetle. Um, maybe back to Mackenzie for a second. Um, we do have a number of uh, partnerships with First Nations. 
Um, they're quite integral to, to what we do there, and we're looking to foster partnerships in other parts of the business area as well. But that includes um, a lot of contract work, um, capacity building, working with First Nations tenures, partnering in our areas to help us with some of the stewardship efforts, um, uh, along with um, some future collaborative planning type opportunities. So we're quite excited about that and, and, and quite proud of that. Um, Moving down to the Robson Valley here, and in particular in Valmont, the majority of our operations are down the Kin Basket Lake on both the east and the west um, canoe uh, road systems. We've, um, in the past 10 years, focused our area on the east canoe. We've made significant infrastructure investments that have allowed us to get down as far as, for those of you that are familiar with the area, to the Hugh Allen drainage. Um, we were successful in the last few years in awarding timber sale licenses down there, which we were very excited about. And then um, last year with the wildfires, we unfortunately lost that, that entire drainage. It, it affected um, some of our timber sale license holders. It affected some of our um, timber development that we were ready to move to market with, as well as some of our planning. So. Um, Luckily, we're blessed with, with very good staff in our business area, and so they've really been able to turn their minds to some alternative plans. We're going to continue our focus in um, the uh, East Canoe Road system, and we hope to have um, timber ready to go more towards the early part of 2020, which is quite a feat when you consider the amount of um, time and, and effort that goes into um, preparing that stuff for auction. Moving beyond that, we'll probably look to um, develop um, into our areas quite a ways down on, on the West Canoe, but that's probably five years or so down the road. Yes, thanks, Jeremy. Yeah, so I, and, and our cut, our our um, our allowable annual cut, our, our apportionment, as we call it in BC timber sales in the Robson Valley, is about ninety three thousand cubic meters. Um, I guess the other thing I should mention is um, the areas that we are putting a focus on in um, reconfiguring our plans are trying to evaluate the um, Hugh Allen drainage for uh, fire salvage opportunities, first and foremost, um, and as well as any other um, areas that were impacted by the spruce bark beetle. Particularly in the Mackenzie area, or are you finding signs down this way as well? Uh, down this way as well. Okay. Yes, our, our activities in the um, Hugh Allen, the areas that were impacted, were actually focused on high-priority spruce bark beetle areas as well. Well, thank you very much. That's a really good overview of what BCTS does for us and other British Columbians. Um, are there any questions of the delegation? I have a question. Yeah. Well, my first one was going to be, are you going to attempt to salvage the timber down the Hugh Allen? Because there is timber there that looks as if it maybe was burned in, you know. And, but it would have to be done probably this spring, I would assume, before wind, shake, and insects. I wondered how soon you were thinking of looking at that. We've already, um, thank you for the question, that's an excellent question. Um, we've already started with crews in, um, in the Hugh Allen area assessing the, um, the economic um, and logistical viability of logging in those areas because safety becomes a, a huge concern. Um, I had the opportunity to fly over it in a helicopter last year and um, it's quite um, amazing the intensity of the fire that, that went through. But um, we started our evaluation in that area late last fall, I believe, and we're continuing to do that. So um, there is absolutely a sense of urgency. Thank you. Any further questions? Yep. I have a, another question that's sort of outside the Valemount area of interest, but when you're driving between here and Prince George, between McBride and beyond the ancient forest, all the cedar appears to be dead or stressed. It's an odd color all through there, and I wondered if you had had any information about that. I don't. I, I wouldn't be able to speak to that specifically without yeah. 
getting some information. Um, you might want to look at. It's, it's quite obvious when you're driving that it, it's taken on a different hue than cedar. Mm. And I don't know whether it's drought has stressed it or whether it's, or whether it's stressed or whether it's dying. Absolutely, yeah. And, and um, as I mentioned, um, the majority of our uh, operating areas are in the Valemont South area in the Kin Basket. Um, it could be that those areas are in other licensee operating areas. Um, having said that, um, we do have um, a, 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 a small area um, north of McBride, and um, um, we have been able to auction some cedar uh, that's been able to support uh, one of the local mills in the McBride area uh, through uh, uh, BKB Cedar. Okay. Thank you. Further questions from council? I have a few questions. <laughs> sure. Um, your 20% allocation of the AAC in this TSA, um, did that include uplifts when it was given to the private sector as well? Did you get an uplift? Uh, through the pine beetle or temporary or otherwise? I would have to look back at the history of the um, allowable annual cut determinations and the minister's apportionments. But generally speaking, um, the BC Timber Sales Program is always striving for that 20% of the AAC in the timber supply area. Um, statistically, that's been determined to be the appropriate level to ensure that we've got a valid market pricing system. Sure. So in, in, in certain cases, when there have been uplifts, then um, the BC Timber Sales Program would, would, would experience some of that as well. Okay. Right, and so in the last timber supply review, um, there was a reduction in the allowable annual cut, and so we dropped from 108,000 cubic meters a year down to 93,000. When was that review, three years ago? 20. 2015. 2015, only four years ago. Um, when's the last time you've done a forest inventory in this area? Um, the reason I bring, bring that up is technology has changed over the last couple of years uh, to include both fixed wing and UAV LIDAR uh, mapping. Um, our local community forest has been successful in, do, in doing their own forest inventory and providing evidence that there is further uh, sustainable practices and a, a higher AAC. I'm just wondering if BCTS is going down that road of inventorying what forests you do have. Uh, we've definitely invested in, in LIDAR um, fairly recently. Um, Jeremy, I don't know if we've... We've got about 50% of our operating areas in the Robson Valley flowing with LIDAR. Right. Um, we would have finished last year, but we ran out because of the fire. Yeah, smoke kind of hinders that. Yeah. Um, were you able to make it down to the human island? Probably not. Sorry? No. With, your, with your lighter mapping, were you able to get down to no, the human island? No, that was next on the slate. Okay. Then the fire broke out. So, so the, the blocks that you do have uh, down there, uh, like up the goat, uh, this way towards 53 kilometer, uh, fairly steep in some locations. So is slope stability due to fire and... Uh, <coughs> How does that look for, for safety for, say, road users? Uh, it's certainly a concern that needs to be looked at, and that's where we would get our um, professional engineers and geoscientists involved to do those professional evaluations. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the, the fire was quite hot and severe that went through there, and so that'll have to be a part of the evaluation, um, safety being first and foremost. Because groundwater will certainly have not the same effect or impact because the trees are not sucking it up absolutely and for our for general folks around these parts the uh, OVR would be uh, it's quite used down there so off-road vehicles yeah. um, and then does the province maintain its own silvicultural liabilities um, the BC timber sales program maintains its own liabilities um, every time we harvest a block we we book those liabilities and and, and as a part of the pricing um, uh, the market pricing system, those um, those dollars associated with the liabilities are set aside to ensure um, we have those investments for um, uh, future free-to-grow stands okay. to manage it through to free-to-grow. Awesome. 
best practices? We try. <laughs> well, thank you very much. If there's no uh, further questions of council, motion to receive the delegation. Councilor Pearson, Councilor McLean. Uh, any comments on the delegation to council? Yes. Just thank you for the video. That was very informative and the overall um, view was very good. So thank you very much for coming and letting everybody know what, what you're doing and um, how things are going. Well, you're very welcome. Um, and um, as I mentioned, I would encourage um, anybody in attendance tonight to um, have a look at it again, share it with um, whoever you think would benefit from it. And the other thing I was going to mention is if that you go on our BC Timber Sales public website, you'll also see a link to what we call our multi-year development plans. And so um, in there, you'll be able to f get a sense at a fairly high level um, where our operations are focused over the next several years. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate the delegation. I appreciate you coming to town. And uh, please, all in favor of the receipt, carried. Thank you very much, Mr. Stratton. Thank you. Item 5.2, uh, we have Michael Lewis of Three Rangers Brewing uh, regarding his proposed Michael uh, patio uh, expansion and requested variance. Mr. Lewis, <coughs> floor is yours. Mayor Council uh, and Council, sorry, thank you for uh, very much for having me this evening. Um, I appreciate that. I'm, I also appreciate the Jamins for their comment ahead of time. <laughs> Unplanned support is a phenomenal thing. <coughs> um, I'm here to address the uh, development permit with the variance that's going before Council and the variance, uh, the development permit is for an expansion of our patio. Uh, the variance is for the parking requirement that's uh, associated with village bylaws and what our patio expansion would incur as far as a, a parking requirement. Um, if you're familiar, hopefully, with the, uh, the letter that I sent to Council as well, we're looking at developing the um, eastern side of that front blacktop area right there to increase our capacity by 28 seats, only in good weather times, um, which is really critical uh, because we have a very finite amount of those days as what we thought spring was showing us. <laughs> um, and our patio months are, I would say probably 70% of our revenue, 70 to 75% of our revenue. It's huge because those are the times when we make our money and uh, fingers crossed, this has been the first winter that we really haven't, um, for lack of a better term, bled a lot as far as <clears throat> outgoing cash without the, the same matching income. We've come, um, I kind of spoke too soon in January and February, but we've come closest to, our, to a break-even winter season this year. Not quite there yet. <clears throat> um, with this, Patio uh, size increase, the 28 seats would require a, uh, seven parking stalls on our part. In 2014, um, I didn't stand up here because I wasn't as well versed in my business acumen, which I don't know if this is, um, but I did sit in this, uh, in this council chamber to witness the passing of our first variance for parking stalls. Um, and we say, face the same challenges today. I can't afford to pay the penalty for it, and I don't have the, I can't magic out property to create it. Um, it's been discussed with staff, the potential of using the open lot next to our building. Uh, as you've, again, seen in, in our letter, we have a couple of reasons for that, and it's primarily, for, well, a lot of reasons are there. Um, Safety is one, because it's very close to the existing patio. It actually, the existing patio and the alignment of the access from Fifth Avenue is just nearly in a straight line. It's probably uh, about three to four feet off. Um, that in and of itself is not an epic concern, except you have moving vehicles which carry a lot of mass um, and people sitting there on the patio uh, enjoying the outdoors and just that close of proximity I'm not comfortable with as a liability on my property. Um, the food truck, as you're aware from, from last year, sets up in next to the Stedman's building at 1170, but also 
overlaps onto our property. Children and people traffic that constantly. It's whether they use the sidewalk or behind the logs and the fence and the brick wall there, it is, it is constantly trafficked and again creates another potential conflict with vehicles that could exist. And again, too, you look at the fact that that width of that uh, entryway doesn't allow for two-way traffic. It, it is really a one-way traffic corridor, which is slightly constrained by the parallel parking spaces. They definitely have room, the ones on the street, but they are, uh, they are of a concern. And lastly, as a business that does serve alcohol, the last thing I want to do is create the, the reasoning for people to see, hey, there's more parking spaces and have them feel like it's okay to drive to the brewery. People do. People consume very safely. We're very um, aware of serving it right, but it's also an awareness on my part that I have to be concerned about every single patron that walks in there. And unfortunately, there's times where you have no idea what someone's tolerance level is, and I've one, out, one drink can throw it all sideways for them. But if they go to the grocery store and other places, so those are things that we look at, I'm always concerned about, and I want to create a safer environment by not incentivizing that. Um, the second is the, the draw for this village. Like, what are we trying to get? Are we looking for more people to drive downtown? Um, as Monique spoke about, we really want to see that vibrancy of walking and biking and so forth. So one of the things we're doing is installing a second bike rack. Last year, I think we counted at one point I had 37 bikes parked outside and my bike rack's only about a 12 slot rack. So we're increasing the size of that, size of that and I wanna keep it um, growing. We'll hopefully add another one later this summer. Um, walking and, and creating a bike centric population here is really what we wanna do as a village and I, I really appreciate that. And uh, lastly, if you ask about the back access of that property is the um, future planning. Um, as you've probably seen, the, the article in the GOAT uh, a couple of months ago was a little too alarming. We're not near shutting down, but we're trying to grow. We're trying to grow because uh, we have a huge volume of business that, that leaves this valley. And production-wise, we struggle and struggle to meet that volume of business. Um, and it's, it is by increasing this front of house where we can increase our um, highest margin revenue, that increases our ability to grow. Further, we are getting out there, starting to look for some investment, but uh, the, the ability to grow, the first place we're gonna grow across is the back of that property. And so I, I see the potential of that being closed off into a larger facility in the back, and that's something that we, we wanna see happen, and I. I don't want to create this idea of where people are coming to now and then have to close it off in two years if we have the ability to create this growth. Um, our future patio area that we're looking at with uh, expansion as well will wrap around uh, the side of that building and be directly in line with that uh, driveway area. So that's something that we're very, um, very keen on keeping free. and. As I said, we, we reach out. So currently we, we um, distribute from Smithers to Dawson Creek all the way south into the Okanagan down Highway 97 as well and in the province of Alberta. And uh, to keep my employees fit for duty and, and uh, keep our business moving along in the way that we need to, uh, this patio is, is the beginning of it and creating it in a bike-centric way that further attracts more visitors to our mountain bike park and incentivizes them for riding their bikes or walking to the brewery is something we really wanna see. So I'd appreciate your support um, as we move forward in this effort and with both the variants and the patio expansion. Uh, and I promise we'll make it look very nice in accordance with the, the village. That's all I have. Well, thank you very much. Uh, motion, please, Council, to receive the delegation. Councilor Pearson and Councilor Blanchett, are there questions or comments for the delegation? Any at all? Councilor Pearson. Um, thank you for the delegation. And 
I mean, I think we all, all support the expansion. Uh, it kind of caught us off guard when this one came out. This time I had been talking to uh, senior staff a few weeks ago about the parking issue. Um, and, you know, part of it is that we're trying to draw people into the downtown, as was mentioned earlier, signage to get people off the highway. There's no point getting them off the highway if we have nowhere to put them. There's only 16 parking spots on Fifth Avenue in that block at this point. Um, so I'm, I'm a little concerned because we are focusing on pedestrian and cycle centric traffic, but we can't get away from vehicle traffic. So I have some concerns on the, on the parking issue um, and going forward. Um, and I'd, I'd actually like to have more conversation with staff on what our future is for parking uh, at this point, but that's all I have at this point. Thank you. I, Councillor McLean? Yeah, I, I concur with Pete. I, I love the brewery. I think it's great. Um, my concerns are, is that the pizza place opening up across the street in the IGA, those are things that people kind of will stay longer. The pizza place and the brewery parkers will stay longer than a, a senior or somebody popping in for a few groceries. So if there was some way that we could say, don't park along the front of the IGA if you're going to the brewery, bike or walk. But if you're a senior going, to, you know, to get your weekly groceries or even, a, you know, somebody with kids busy loading your groceries, it's not as feasible as it is for patrons of the brewery to walk or cycle was my concern. So I have no issues with the expansion. I think it will be wonderful. But I do have concerns about, in combination with the pizza place, the length of stay of people parking in the, the stalls that we've become accustomed to using when we do our grocery and liquor shopping. Thank you. Further <coughs> comments for the delegation? Um, obviously, we all have some concerns. But I think, for myself, this reaches beyond we have a parking issue. Um, I am all for um, Michael's expansion. We want, we are open for business. We want businesses to come. We want people to come. Uh, yes, they're gonna drive, bike, or walk, but I think that we need to address the parking issue. Um, I'm not sure how we're gonna do that. Uh, maybe it's a committee of the whole. I, I, I don't know at this point, um, but I wanna thank you for the delegation. You always have our, my support. Um, you're doing really well and I want to keep encouraging that so I don't want to throw a wrench into it. Um, so I think we just have to look at this parking issue separate from this. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much for the delegation, sir. Thank you. Enjoy. All in favor of receipt of delegation? Carried. We have a couple of correspondence for action here. First on the 7.1 from the Valmont Youth Soccer, there's a request to waive the fee to rent playing fields at the secondary school? Yeah. Okay. Um, and the recommendation here is that, uh, that the fees be waived for uh, between May and June. Spelling, spelling mistake. Oh. It's his first time. Uh, May and June of 2019. Councillor Blanchett, Councillor Pearson, any uh, discussion on the uh, waiving of the fees? Fully support. Thank you very much. As do I. All in favor? Carried. Uh, second, uh, under 7.2, uh, we have a request from the Vailmont Community Forest for the appointments to the Board of Directors <coughs> and that the following appointed uh, be appointed to the Belmont Community Forest Board of Directors, Ainsley Jackman, Gordon Carson, Jerry Piper, Vern Mickelson, John McGuire, Peter Reimer, and Ray Mickelash to round out the seven. Uh, is there a motion? Councilor Blanchett, Councilor Pearson, discussion on the appointments? I'd like to thank them for serving for it. They're all professional in, their, in that field, and I think that's a, a great setup. Yeah. So I'd like to thank them. Annual general meeting on the 25th. <laughs> Further discussion on the appointments for the COM4? All in favor? Carried. And for 
Under 7.3, we have uh, appointments to the board of our other limited partnership through the Vailmont Industrial Park and that the following be appointed to the Vailmont Industrial Park Limited Partnership Board of Directors. Angela Jackman, Gordon Carson, Jerry Piper, Vern Mickelson, John McGuire, Peter Reimer, Ray McClash. Motion, please. Councillor Pearson, Councillor Blanchett. Discussion on the appointments. Again, uh, thank you for, for them stepping forward. Yeah, that industrial park is quite busy now. All in favor of appointment? Carried. 7.4, we have a request from Mrs. Hope Norm under the BCAA Play Here contest, and she's looking to have council grant permission for Valmont to be nominated to take part in the BCAA Play Here contest. Council Blanchett, Council McLean, any uh, discussion on the contest? Um, two things. I'd like to thank Ms. Norm, Mrs. Norm for putting this out there. I think this is a great thing. Um, I just wonder if somebody's going to be working with staff, if staff have enough time to do this. I noticed the due date is really fast. Um, staff is good to go. Mr. Administrator? I will write uh, the letter for them uh, today or tomorrow. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. All in favor of uh, granting permission? Carried. Does any one want to pull anything out of the reading file? Councilor Blanchett. So I wanted to pull out the scooters uh, pizza letter. Mm -hmm. So just uh, for information, the um, Chamber of Commerce is looking at the sign issue. Um, we have a few ideas on um, our radar. Um, so I think that this would be a good project for the Chamber and scooters to work on. And having a discussion with a fellow councillor earlier today, I think we need to reinstitute the sign committee. I think we're at a stage where we've got businesses coming in, we've got businesses that are no longer here, have never been here, signage is still up. Um, you know, old signs do not look attractive. Um, so I think we need to look at bringing that back. Okay. Would you be in favor of, uh, I'll ask Councillor Pearson before I throw him under a bus here. Um, I heard it coming. Would you mind taking this letter back to Tourism Valmont and then through the chamber, instead of maybe getting another committee together, uh, the chamber and Tourism Valmont might have an opportunity to provide some feedback to Council? Yep, no, I uh, definitely take it to the, the next tourism meeting as well, um, but I do agree with Councillor Blanchett on the uh, the need for the sign committee to to look at things um, just so we sort of have a standardized idea of what's going to be out there and I know the previous sign committee sort of came to a halt from my understanding so yes um, I think that we need to remember too we also have a lot of entrepreneurs that work from their homes um, I believe it's over 70 in our area um, and they don't have a lot of signage opportunities um, we cannot have fifth of course littered with signs so I think that this is a good thing for the chamber to be involved in as well and a, and a few of the chamber members were on the previous sign committee um, and they made quite a bit of headway um, things happened it fell through but I think um, we're at a need to make some um, changes okay. so all that. I look forward to hearing the recommendations from both the Chamber and Tourism Demo. Okay. And uh, should your groups, and I, I, I'm pretty adamant, if, if your groups are wanting to reform the committee, okay. I'll support that. Okay. Is there anything else from the reading file? Uh, I'd like to thank Sergeant Robert Dean of the uh, Robson Valley Regional uh, RCMP for his uh, safety concerns along the corridor. Um, looking forward to seeing how that file moves forward from his office and um, both uh, the UBCM for funding through the CDC program October mm -hmm. October we'll be having our C2C with the First Nation looking forward to that and of course the UBCM uh, conf confirmation of funding through the community child care planning program it's uh, two excellent uh, ways that we can move those two programs forward 
And of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't remind everybody of the annual general meeting of the Belmont Community Forest of uh, April 25, starting at 5 o'clock for a tour of the industrial park and 6.30 for the start of their AGM. Uh, item 9.1, uh, we have a reminder that the Union of British, Minis uh, British Columbia Municipalities resolution deadline uh, is coming up and that the report be received for information. Council Blanchett, Council Pearson. Do we have anything that we want to do? We're going to be hitting NCLGA in a couple weeks. Okay. Let's see if they miss anything. Motion for uh, to receive, uh, sorry, all in favor of uh, receipt, carried. 9.2, we have a proposed development permit with a variance for 1160 Fifth Avenue through Ranges Brewing. Uh, there are two recommendations, uh, give initial uh, approval uh, or deny the development permit. I'll ask for a motion for discussion. Council Blanchett. Is there a second to run discussion? <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Pearson. It's open for discussion. I'll ask me there. <coughs> Any discussion? Oh, I thought you wanted to go. Sorry, you had your no. hand up. Okay. No, no, I was okay. still trying to get his attention. So when I first when I <laughs> when I first sat down tonight, I was sort of figuring out what I wanted to do in my head. Um, I like having public comment at the beginning, so thank you very much. And I liked our delegation, uh, his speaking. Um, I'm torn because um, we need to have parking. Um, but I do not want to ever tell a business, I'm sorry, but you can't grow. I just, I won't do it. Um, it's hard. It's he employs, um, as things were mentioned, he employs locally. Um, he's not just serving our village. He's serving outside of it. He's serving another province. And I think that we as a village need to encourage that. And when other um, entrepreneurs and businesses see that, that's really great. It, it's, a, it's a good thing for the, for the village. Hey, look at this. They've taken this. And yes, there were some problems and issues. But they worked with him. They were flexible. He was flexible. Everything sort of worked together. And he's doing really well. And, and then in turn, we're doing really well as a village and as a community. So I, um, I would like to waive the... The parking feed. I know we're having a parking issue, but I think we need to work on the parking issue separately. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion on discussion? Is, is there any way that Councillor McLean? Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Councillor McLean. Is there any way that we could limit parking across the street? So that if you know that you're going to go to the brewery and or the pizza place or the IGA for that matter, and you know that you'll be longer than an hour, that you will park somewhere other than in front of the entrance to the liquor store or the IGA. So, yes, uh, not yet, but because we don't have anything in place for right. that. Um, Councillor Blanchett. So is that something that maybe if we can institute the new sign committee, that could be something that they work on, right? Like, I mean, like it, it's signs, it's signage, right? Um, you know, I know that sometimes I'm trying to go to the grocery store after work and I'm trying to race in and the, the, it's full and that's life, you know. But um, if something was like that, like, I mean, if, you know, if I'm hobbling on crutches and stuff and I can't get in my car, I'm going to be a little cheesed off. But if I know that, you know, parking's down there, mm -hmm. I mean, it's something to think about. So kind of speaking to both those points, uh, and I don't know if it's, basically I'm, I'm two options at now, but um, in referring into both comments about the parking on IGA, it's sort of stepping outside of the, the prime topic, but one of my things that I really notice on Fifth Avenue in driving through on a regular basis is that you have business owners and employees parked in, in front of their business for an eight hour shift. Um, it's just taking away from what we're trying to do. Um, I mean, 
for lack of being popular, I would really like to see two hour parking limits on Fifth Avenue in that stretch. So that people have an opportunity to go in, shop, move on, the next person comes in. Um, like I said, there's no reason for a staff member to be parked for six a six hour shift. Um, so that would be one option. And I don't know if it's, is it possible to split 9.2 to allow acceptance of the expansion with further discussion on the variance? I don't know if that's possible. Oh, anything's possible. <laughs> Anything. Um, my thoughts around limiting parking um, starts with education and just common sense. If you, if you, I know, I know, Sorry. I know. Sorry. That's why we have bylaws. That's why we have bylaws. We can edit those. Um, but knowing that, uh, going back to what Councilor Blanchett said and, and Councilor McLean, knowing that your, what your destination is in mind, uh, whether it be the grocery store or any other business in the downtown area, um, choosing a parking spot based on that destination and your longevity in, in, of time. Um, moving to Councilor Pearson's uh, recommendation, uh, I can certainly bring that back to staff for um, benchmarking and see where we can go from there. Councilor Pearson. I, I applaud you for your assumption that there is common sense left in the world. <laughs> Thank you. I'm a non-believer. Um, but I also don't think educate. <laughs> I don't think education uh, will necessarily work in trying to guide people down the better path to parking choices. Um, I think we will still have an 80-year-old senior having to park two blocks away to get her groceries any time after one or three in the afternoon on Fifth Avenue. So I, I think we really need to look at that and deal with as we say in council, Martha, mm -hmm. as well. So. All right. Any further discussion on discussion? All in favor of receipt. Carried. Back to the two recommendations before council. Uh, what is council's wish? I believe I had made a motion to waive the fee. Did I? You endorsed. Okay. Under discussion. Okay, so I would like to make a motion to waive the uh, parking fee, but then I'd like to make a sub motion to have a discussion again about parking on another time with more information from staff. Does that make sense? So she's looking for waiving uh, to giving initial approval to the development variant with the variance for patio expansion, waiving parking requirements. And taking it in, and instructing count, uh, staff to initiate further review of parking. Of parking overall, yeah. Clear as crystal. Is there a seconder on that motion, Councillor Pearson? Uh, discussion on the motion. All in favor? Carried. Item nine point three. We have an amendment. Uh, to said three ranges brewing company's liquor license and uh, the recommendation here from staff they be directed to gather public input is it 100 meters 200, 200 meters. meters okay big public input and uh, prepare a template oh, sorry sorry public input yes 100 meters okay. apology uh, and prepare a template for council's comments recommendations at the regular meeting of May 14 Count Councillor Blanchett, Councillor McLean, discussion on the amendment? All in favor? Carried. <coughs> we have under 9.4 our resort development strategy as presented uh, to the Resort Municipality Initiative Program. Uh, we're being asked to approve the RMI Resort Development Strategy 2019 2021, prepared in collaboration with Tourism Belmont and local organizations slash stakeholders. Councilor Blanchett, Councilor Pearson, any discussion on the RMI development strategy? Councilor Blanchett. I'd like to thank everybody involved in this. This was a really good informational read. 
Um, it's There's a lot of stuff going on, and I'd like to thank everybody that put this together. It's a lot of hard work, and it was great, it's greatly appreciated. Councillor Pearson? Yeah, I, I would just say on um, all the work on the RMI proposals and stuff were done before I got on the committee, but uh, an amazing amount of work and some really, really cool projects that are being funded. So. Awesome. I see, uh, Mr. Gaslamberti, you still have some hair left. <laughs> Excellent. All in favor of approval? Carried. Item 9.5, uh, we have an update uh, for information purposes from the third annual craft beer event taking uh, place this summer. Uh, motion please to receive. Councillor Pearson, Councillor McLean, any discussion on receipt? I'm looking forward to it. All in favor of receipt? Carried. Item 9.6, uh, staff are looking to sole source the contract of sewer line uh, cleaning and CCTV inspections to uh, Northern Lights Technology and uh, asking to authorize staff to sole source the contract for the SCADA upgrades to well engineering. Motion please, Councillor Blanchett, Councillor Pearson, any discussion on the sole sourcing? Councillor Pearson. Quick question. I love our use of acronyms. What is SCADA upgrade? <laughs> ah. <laughs> systems. I would say something about system controls, alarms, and data acquisition. Oh, sure. Sounds good. <laughs> good job. <laughs> I'll Google it later, but I'll go with that. I think I'm fairly close. <laughs> Sounded good. Uh, all in favor of sole sourcing? Oh, did, did you have? A I just comment? wanted to let everybody know that we're sole sourcing because these are such specific things that they need to be um, addressed by people that know what they're doing, and that's why we're going this route, so that everybody knows. And we've had good service in the past. From exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All in favor of sole sourcing? Carried. Under bylaws and policies, item ten point one, Village of Belmont zoning bylaw. 610 2007 amendment uh, that the letters and verbal presentations regarding the village of Elmont zoning amendment bylaw 796 2019 be received for information which there are none yes, and that the village of Elmont zoning amendment bylaw 796 2019 begin with third reading council blanchett council mclean discussion on third reading hearing none all in favor carried Item 10.2, Village of Elmont, I love this one. Village of Elmont obs obsolete bylaws repeal bylaw number 797-2019 that the uh, Belmont obsolete bylaws repeal bylaw 797-2019 be adopted. Councillor Blanchett, Councillor Pearson, uh, any discussion on obsolete bylaws? I just have a question. Did we ever have an arcade and pool room? Yeah, Did we? Yeah, okay. it was in, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. There was a pool hall. Okay. Yeah. Uh, where the old laundromat was in Karis. Okay. On Karis okay. Drive. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> and I'm sure there's a multitude of private pool halls around me. The... Yeah, there was one down Main. Yeah. All in favor of uh, adoption? Carried. 10.3, Village of Elmont five-year financial bylaw. Uh, there is some additional information here for you, Council, so uh, we can take some time on this. Uh, number 798, 2019, we do have a recommendation that the um, five-year financial plan bylaw, oh, we have an updated recommendation, uh, to approve third reading of the five-year financial bylaw, 798, 2019, with changes as provided by the Director of Finance. Just, I'll just get the motion on the floor. Councillor Blanchett, Councillor Pearson, take your time with the uh, amendment. Did anybody get a chance to review the spreadsheet and get a great understanding of what a comfort letter is? <laughs> 
My eyes are still spinning. <laughs> Opposite ways. <laughs> Ready to call the question? Or any is there discussion on the uh, flavor financial bylaw? Third reading. Great job as usual. Agreed. Yeah. All in favor? Carried. Item 10.4 Village of Elmont Emergency Program Regulatory Bylaw Number 757 uh, 2016 Amendment Bylaw Number 800 2019. Uh, please counsel that you adopt the Village of Elmont, uh, uh, Village of Elmont Emergency Program Regulatory Bylaw Number 757, 2016 Amendment Bylaw Number 800, 2019. Councillor McLean, Councillor Pearson, discussion on final adoption. All in favor? Carried. Item 10.5, uh, Village of Elmont 2019 Tax Rate Bylaw Number 802, 2019. And staff are looking for uh, first and second reading thereof. And third. and third reading, thank you. First, second, and third. Councilor Blanchett, Councilor Pearson, any discussion? All in favor? Carried. Oh, this is where I saw that comfort letter. Uh, 10.6 Village of Elmont Fees and Charges Bylaw Number 803, or 803, pardon me, 2019, that the Fees and Charges Amendment Bylaw 803, 2019, be given for second and third reading. Councillor Pearson, Councillor Blanchett, any discussion on fees and charges amendments? Hearing none. All in favor? Carried. Section 11. Item 11.1, .1, Council Reports. Uh, Councillor Blanchett. Uh, what did I do? I don't know. Okay, on the 11th, I had a Robson Valley Community Services uh, meeting in McBride, and I can't remember what we discussed, but that's life. Um, on the 13th, I have to say, I went to the Volunteer Awards um, put on by the Lions, and it was really well done. Um, I want to thank them all for working really hard. Um, it was a great night, um, and it was nice to see the recognition for the volunteers because we do run on volunteers here. And um, it was just a good night. The mayor gave a, a lovely speech. Uh, we had a couple of night, good speakers um, filling in some information, and it was a fun night had by all. So I'm hoping that next year on their second annual one, there'll be more in attendance. Um, and I'm hoping that they keep it going because I think it really is important. Um, and I was um, glad to uh, attend. And on the 18th, we had a housing meeting, and everything's moving along with that quite quickly. Um, it's quite positive. It's just such a great bunch of people doing a really hard job. Um, I, and I know I say this all the time, but you know we all know that there's such a need, and so everybody's trying so hard to get it done and hurry up and you know make the wheels turn faster, which you know always just works so well. <laughs> um, but I just want to thank everybody for that because it is a it is a rough a rough road ahead of us, but everybody's doing twelve thousand percent. So thank you. That's it. Awesome, Councillor Pearson. Oh, a really late two week period. Uh, all I had was this morning or this afternoon earlier, Historic Society AGM and uh, Paul Johnson has been re-elected as president for another term and things are carrying on there. Museum is scheduled to open May 13th. Awesome. Yeah. That's really it. Right. That was it for me. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Fantastic, Councillor McLean. Mine is even lighter. <laughs> I, I only had one um, uh, event on Thursday, April 11th. I attended the Belmont Community Television Annual General Meeting. Along with the meeting and the election of new officers, the evening included viewing of VCTV's video production, A Year in Review. It featured highlights from a whopping 93 community event videos taken by VCTV in 2018. The video was very well done. VCTV and Michael are doing a great job of showcasing Valmont and the events that take place here. 
as well as creating permanent public video records of people and events that otherwise would not exist. You can watch it online on YouTube. <laughs> Thank you. Does that include like the 56 meetings we had last year? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, first off, probably, I don't know if I brought this up prior on uh, Tuesday. Let me see. Oh, geez, we're going back a ways. Yeah. All right, uh, Tuesday of last council meeting, um, I had a intro meeting with Val uh, Kunsker and uh, Mr. Robinson here. Uh, Val's with uh, Ministry of Transportation Infrastructure, the regional office out of Prince George. Um, kind of just a high level of what they're doing in the area uh, this time around. Uh, some of their seal coding programs. Um, and I think I can say, I will say, it doesn't matter if I can or not, um, that the highway corridor study is virtually completed. So I'm looking forward to uh, to getting that review uh, with Council. Uh, it'll be stupendous. My understanding is Highway 5 especially seeing growth of 1% annually. And the last corridor study was uh, completed 1999-2000. Uh, um, with Highway 16, uh, corridor study kind of at the 80% complete mark. So very soon. Uh, hope to receive a, a summary of that. Uh, I joined Councillor Blanchett the volunteer night. Uh, again, it's <coughs> great that our volunteers can receive some recognition. Uh, they do so much. What do we have? 60 some odd nonprofit groups. Uh, had a call in to the Columbia, uh, the regional broadband uh, committee uh, as part of local government. Um, highlight from that meeting is that they'll be asking um, for a renewal of our MOU uh, moving forward. So the th four regional, regional districts, uh, the Tanaha, First Nation, and the Village of Vermont uh, moving forward on that broadband file. Uh, on the 16th, I attended the LDM uh, stakeholders engagement. Always a full table out at uh, Tijon with some great feedback. For regional district, uh, we had a, a C2C with the West Moberly First Nation on uh, Wednesday, the, the evening of Wednesday the 17th, and I have to say that uh, Chief Wilson is really cool. Um, full of humor, uh, passion, tradition, um, just just a great uh, meeting with, with, uh, with him and his <coughs> council. And then, of course, followed by on the 18th, uh, regional board uh, from 8.30 in the morning to 4 o'clock that day. Uh, had a bit of a rundown with stakeholders today uh, regarding the caribou engagement tomorrow, so met with uh, Doug Rutledge and Craig Pryor, uh, both uh, acting on behalf of Carrier and the Valmont Community Forest. And uh, again, I can't... Uh, Stress it enough that tomorrow's engagement uh, doors open at five at the community hall, uh, where the province and the government of Canada will be presenting their partnership agreement uh, draft and the Section 11 uh, draft agreement. Uh, that will Section 11 draft will basically encompass this area, whereas the partnership agreement is more or less uh, confined to the uh, Chetwin area. So, please, all of your network. Get them out, and I'm here before you now. Any questions of council and their reports? Or not? Motion to receive the reports. Council Blanchett, Council McLean, all in favor? Carried. Uh, we do have under item 14, 14.1, uh, to give a notice to proceed in camera, uh, and we will, or Please that uh, council proceed to an in-camera meeting for consideration of one item, section 91C of the community charter to discuss matters related to labor relations or other employee relations. 
Councillor Blanchett, Councillor Pearson, all in favor? Carried. Thank you all for coming.